My name is Ronald Hugate. I specialize in complex orthopedics at Panorama, and this is a video about Gons osteotomies. The Gons osteotomy is also known as PAO, periacetabular osteotomy. It was designed in the early 1980s by a, a Swiss surgeon by the name of Reinhold Gons, and his goal was to create an operation that would help patients with hip dysplasia. Uh, patients born with hips that haven't developed entirely uh, tend to get hip pain early in life and his goal was to create an operation that would fix that problem without them having to have a uh, hip replacement early in life or developing severe hip arthritis early in life. Hip dysplasia is a condition that you're actually born with. Um, as you're developing um, as a baby, your, your hip uh, uh, develops as a socket over the ball. So the ideal condition for hip development is to have the ball right uh, under the socket. If you have a dysplastic hip, what happens is the socket doesn't form completely over the ball. Uh, it's more common in females, it's more common in uh, larger babies, it's more common in babies that are breech delivery, um, but when they're born, their socket is not covering the ball. That means that the hip can pop out of the joint a bit more easily. It's usually um, screened for in the nursery after you're born, and the pediatrician can find it and correct it without surgery. However, there are a small percentage of people that make it through to adulthood with hips that aren't completely formed and then eventually develop pain. So here, if you look at this, um, these two x-rays, they show uh, on the top a normal hip joint where the socket is over the ball. That means when the ball moves around in the socket, it's very stable, it doesn't move, and it doesn't cause um, any pain. On the bottom here, you can see the socket is only partially formed. It only partially covers the ball. And so what happens in this condition is that it, the ball loads the edge of the socket, creates pain that way by tearing some of the cartilage there. It also can be unstable. The ball can move around in the joint a little bit as well because it's not covered by the socket. Why do people present to our clinic? Why do they have hip pain? Usually they don't have arthritis. They're, they're too young for arthritis and thankfully it hasn't developed yet. But they usually present with what's called a labral tear. The labrum is a, is a small circular cartilage. It actually fits around the rim of the cup. And this, uh, these slides show why the, why the labrum gets damaged and why people have pain when they have dysplasia. If you look at the left side here, this x-ray again shows a normal hip joint. The socket is over the ball and that's the situation that you want. That red arrow shows where the force goes when you step uh, weight bear through your feet, the force goes up through your legs and then into your body, and, it, and this shows where the line of force is. On the left side, in a normal hip, you can see that the force goes through the center of the cup, and that's what you want. There's good cartilage there called articular cartilage that is able to absorb that um, force and pressure, and um, uh, that, that's sort of the normal mechanics of the hip joint. If you see on the right side here, someone with dysplasia, their, their cup is tipped so much, their socket is tipped up so much that the ball actually loads on the edge of the cup. And that's where that yellow dot is, that's the labrum. And so what most young people present to us with is a labral tear because the ball has been sitting on the labrum. Uh, they often will present um, just after puberty or when they get into high school when they start to get bigger physically and uh, when you start to do athletics especially because you start to load the hip joint and start to do a lot of impactful activities. So that's what causes the pain. Another point when we're looking at this is if you, um, if you, design, if you have a hip that is dysplastic and you decide to have your labrum fixed only, uh, not changing the hip shape or the hip joint at all, you can imagine that as soon as you heal from your labrum being fixed, it's just gonna get torn again because it's, it's in the line of fire there. The force is gonna go completely through that labrum. It causes the initial tear, and if, it, if, the, displa if, if the dysplasia is not fixed and that labrum isn't moved out of, dan out of harm's way, it's gonna tear again. When we see a patient with um, hip dysplasia and a labral tear, we generally recommend uh, a two-part surgery. The first part of the surgery is to fix the labrum because that's the source of the pain initially and it's torn. And that is achieved with an operation called hip arthroscopy. It's a series of two or three small incisions. Uh, my partner, Dr. Mike Elman, who is an expert at this type of surgery, 
uh, goes into the joint. He uses a camera to visualize the joint and then uses instruments to fix the, uh, the labrum. If the labrum is torn more significantly, he can actually replace all or segments of the labrum as well. But that's a minimally invasive way to get into the joint, look at the cartilage. Sometimes he'll even have to reshape uh, parts of the, either the cup or the ball so that they don't pinch uh, in certain positions. Um, and that is the first stage of the operation. So once the labrum is repaired, um, we have uh, a system here at Panorama where under the same anesthetic uh, do the GONS operation. The GONS operation is essentially, it's a, it's a series of controlled cuts. So again, the, the goal is to move the cup over the ball. And the way we do that is with uh, about a, a roughly a four inch incision in the groin area. We go down and we have to make three controlled cuts in the bone in order to move or spin the cup up and over the ball. And we have a certain set of prescribed angles that we look for um, to achieve to, to make the ideal correction. It's about a three or a four hour operation total uh, for, for both parts. And when the operation is done, not only do you have your labrum repaired, but you also have the mechanics of your hip joint corrected because we've moved the socket into the correct position. So that protects patients in the long term from re-tearing their labrum and from developing early arthritis, which is the goal. So patients that are good candidates for GONS procedures are generally young, they're active, uh, they have hip pain, and they have dysplasia on, on an x-ray. Uh, we also recommend GONS procedures though for patients who are middle-aged or even a little bit older who enjoy running, for example, because uh, having a hip replacement precludes you from running. You really should not run with a hip replacement. It tends to wear the parts out or loosen the parts of a hip replacement. So if we see an older patient who's very active, wants to keep running or keep uh, performing uh, impactful type of athletic activities, then we also consider GONS uh, procedures for that group as well. The other issues are with the anatomy. Some people have such a severe dysplasia that the ball is no longer round. It's actually oval shaped or extruded. In patients with that severe of dysplasia, they're not really good candidates for uh, GONS procedures because the, the ball and socket don't mate anymore. And so in, in those uh, groups, we tend not to offer GONS uh, procedures. The, um, idea behind the GONS procedure is to offer young people a solution to their hip pain, um, preventing them from developing arthritis and needing a hip replacement early in life. Hip replacements are excellent procedures. They've been around for decades uh, and they're really good at relieving pain. So if you do a hip replacement on uh, most people, regardless of their age, their, their pain will be minimal, if any, after the hip replacement. The issues with young people are uh, twofold. Number one, with a hip replacement, they don't respond well to impactful activities like running. So if you get a hip replacement as a teenager, for example, uh, and you start to run and, and uh, uh, play athletics, uh, it, it tends to wear hip replacements out very quickly. The other issue is, is wear. So if you do a hip replacement in a young person, let's say a 20-year-old, and that hip replacement lasts for 15, 20 years, then they will be back in the OR at age 40 and again at age 60 and so on. So uh, we, we try to put off the hip replacements because the parts tend to wear out and people have to have multiple revisions throughout their lifetime um, if they're put in early. So we do whatever we can to help um, keep their native hip joints um, and try and protect them from developing arthritis early.